played against this team a lot. Oh, uh, yeah. And uh, what was it like on the other side playing against Ottawa in the past? Um, it was always fun coming here. Um, you know, it was uh, the stadium, the situation, um, kind of the atmosphere that Ottawa has was always uh, something that we were envious of. And uh, as a whole, um, just being able to drive in downtown, uh, it's something that not a lot of teams in the league have. You know, you, you're at the restaurant, you, you can have a couple pints, you can walk over. It has the ability to create something uh, fantastic. So. As an outsider, it was, uh, yeah, jealousy, envy, you know, those are the words. It's, a good, it's why I'm here. Nice. So, so that's the primary reason why you're here? No, no, no. Um, it, like just the club itself, you know, uh, what Atletico brings to um, the world stage and, and Canada soccer in general was a, was a no-brainer. Um, so immediately when we found out ownership was coming into Ottawa, the first thing I wanted to do was learn more about it, figure out, you know, is this why are they buying a team in Canada? Are they putting all their resources into it? Um, and the more I heard, the more I was interested in it. The city itself is beautiful. Uh, again, the supporter section um, and, and the fan base in general, like there, there's nothing I didn't like. Um, I went out on a limb actually uh, when I signed here because uh, I spoke a ton with Fernando and obviously there wasn't a coaching staff in place. And I knew that uh, there's going to be a massive turnover, right? Um, he told me the players that aren't returning uh, who he planned on keeping and um, you know a lot of a lot of turnover yeah. so so it was kind of a leap of faith but I had I had all the trust in Fernando and uh, the club itself um, which I think speaks volumes and, and a lot of guys had to make a decision like me before you know who the coaching staff is yeah. and trust them to make the right decisions and uh, uh, after the first month I couldn't be more happy so what was preseason like Preseason was a lot. I mean, it's kind of what you expect. Uh, I know a lot of people were a bit jealous that we're going to Spain and we get to do those things. But, you know, you constantly have to remind them. Uh, it doesn't matter where you are in preseason. It's uh, not a ton of fun. Um, so, uh, yeah, we, we were treated very well. We were taken care of. But um, at the end of the day, it was a lot of work, you know, a lot of double sessions, yeah. uh, matches thrown in there. And um, but the level is high. We have uh, we have depth at every position. We have a lot of guys that are excited, and you know whether they're young or we have an experienced locker room of guys that know. You know we have a handful of years left to uh, really put a stamp on it. So you want to be uh, someone who's won uh, a domestic title and, and a cup and uh, go to a Champions League. Like those are those goals you have when you when you're playing professional football and. Uh, all of us have kind of brought those goals here together and some guys have already done it but a lot of us you know still need to do that so i think this is the year to do it amazing amazing so towards that um what what are your impressions of the new gaffer he's great he's uh he's man a few words you know uh, professional at you know the, the highest degree um him and his staff are uh couldn't be more on the same page had a great relationship with Borja so far, which is our goalkeeper coach. And just, yeah, how they work seamlessly. Obviously, they've come in uh, previously working together, and, uh, and I can see why they brought that whole staff. But the other really good thing that I don't think a lot of people realize is him coming from a national team environment and bringing guys from, you know, all over the place and trying to get them to mend and get together and mesh within, you know, a week before the first game or a few days before their first game. Uh, he's kind of the perfect guy for the job because he's, he's now brought in guys from everywhere and we've had uh, five weeks to get us kind of on the same page, speaking the same language, and um, he's done a very good job of that, I think. And his experience with national teams probably uh, was a lot of help for this, this project. You sound very ready. You sound ready to take it this year. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's my job to be, right? <laughs> and, um, and at goalkeeping, you can't afford, you know, you just got to let the world come to you. You can't go out and chase the game. Mm -hmm. um, you just have to deal with situation by situation and you have to be ready for everything, you know, whether it's, the, you know, the, an easy pass or an easy save or, you know, one in the top bin. So it's, uh, you don't get a choice. You just show up and you got to be ready for everything. Let's talk about the league for a second. What, what do you think about the CPL going into season four, how it's grown? Yeah, it's grown immensely, um, you know, when it comes to the media impressions and marketing and, you know, uh, the amount of clubs that are trying to join or have already announced they're joining or, you know, there's so many rumors about what's going on. Um, thank you to the men's national team for uh, what they've done and Herdman for, you know, the job he's done over the last however many years, because that's going to just be, I don't, th I honestly, even the people inside, I don't think they realize how big what just happened was. Um, and. Uh, I'm so thankful to be a part of it in you know a very small capacity, and uh, and 
I'm hopefully going to be able to reap the benefits and the generations to come are really going to be able to reap the benefits of, uh, of what's going on now. So the league is just on an upward trajectory. The fact they could get through COVID and they're still going strong is just, uh, is, you know, couldn't be better. So uh, I, think, I think people are going to be very excited about this year and it's just going to be, get the ball rolling for years to come. Um. I have another question real quick. Please, go crazy. So I remember your first couple of years, like your first year at York, you really kind of fought hard to get that starting position. Like mm -hmm. they were very deep in goal. They had the, that was always up in the air. And yep. you really secured that spot. Do you worry at all or do you, do you think at all about, is there a new challenge now starting, having to prove that again, having to fight for that with a new squad, a new coach, everything? Or are you very like going into this very confident that you have that like starter role? Uh, yeah, of course. I mean, it's every year is a new challenge. And I was naive when I was younger thinking like, okay, well, once you get there um, and you're a starter and you've been in the league for a few years, then the next contract's coming and you're a starter forever. You know, it's like, oh, you've already proved it. You know, it's, it's done and, and it couldn't be further from the case. Like every year is a new challenge, whether it's winning a spot, securing a spot, fighting for a spot. Like last year, I walked in at York and, you know, everyone from the outside maybe thinks, okay, Nate's in, they brought John Sopolis as a backup. Nico's a, a great goalkeeper, you know, like it was a battle for us in preseason and uh, I had to win that job from him and he didn't make it easy and, um, and that was tough, you know. Now I sign here and uh, a couple weeks later they sign Sean Melvin, you know, which if you look at his resume, people would argue, oh, he's got a national team appearance, he has a MLS contract behind him. You know, it's like another person that is, you know, who's better, right? So it's, it's just another challenge. Now, do you, I have the confidence to come in and be the number one? Like, of course, I have to. You know, that's my job. And you would think anyone at this level is coming in thinking the same thing. But, you know, I've, I've had to take kind of the long way my whole life. I grew up in a small town. Um, I played club level. I wasn't provincial team. I had to wait till I got my university, like uh, into my first year university career before I got my first U20 call up. Um, started with the national team. Like it, it was always, it was never the TFC Academy or the Vancouver Academy. It was always, you know, uh, a little bit of the long way. And uh, and thank God for it because um, I've just been so much better for it. And when it comes to work ethic, when it comes to you know uh, not backing down and and showing up when I need to, that's what I pride myself most on. So um, any team I come into, I, it doesn't matter if it's this level or the next level, that's gotta be the mindset. And in order to reach the goals that I have as a professional footballer and play at the level that I hope to play at, you have to beat out these top guys. And you wanna do it by being the best, not because the other guy's not at the level. So those are just things that maybe when I was young, I would have thought like, oh, it'd be nice if I was just the best and everyone else wasn't very good and then I don't have to worry. And it's like, <laughs> uh, it's just a ridiculous thing to think back on, but it, it is what we think about when we're younger. Sure. When in reality, what you want to be is you want everyone to be very good and you need to be better than that. And because that's how you get a winning, winning team. Awesome. Yeah. Appreciate you having me. I'm really excited about this season. Uh, I can comfortably say probably the most excited I've ever been for a football season. And uh, can't wait to see you on the pitch and uh, welcome you to my new home.